this is Dr. Mobin. So today we have a very interesting topic to discuss and I have been delivering these lectures for some time and today I have a request for you. So what I'm going to be doing today is uh, presenting to you how my robotic camera works and records me. So just know this that the camera which is recording me right now is automated and there is no person standing on the other side uh, working with me. So if you see here, if I move, this movement in the camera is actually coming, is, is automatic and it has been uh, programmed. So look at this, look at the, there is a defect here. And if I take my hands away, it stops doing that. But anyways, this recording right now is being done by the camera. So the question which I have for you guys, number one, I'm going to show you my camera setup today and, and explain how the technology is working. And number two, I have a question for you. The question is, I have recently developed this setup and what should I name this robotic camera? What should be the name of this camera? So I don't know. Maybe it is a RoboCam or maybe it is a MedCam or it is an AutoCam. I don't know. So I am asking you, all the doctors out there, all the medical professionals out there, all the students out there, please help me uh, name this camera. And as you can see, there are some defects in this recording which I'm fixing. But anyways, let, let me quickly explain how this camera works. So how this works is, let's say this is our whiteboard. This is this board. And let's say this is Mobin standing here. So this is Mobin. On this side here, I have gotten a nice tripod with an oil head. So I think that if you are a, with an oil head, the tripod with the oil head, the, the benefit of the oil head is that that moves a little bit smoothly. Although at this time on top of the tripod, I have attached a camera on a, uh, on a pod which has, so now I'm talking te technical here instead of medicine, but we have servo motors in this pod. This is actually a normal security type cam pod which causes the camera to, to uh, move or track the object in front. What I have done, so I don't know if you are aware of this or not, I am a um, software engineer as well. And so I'm a medical doctor plus a software engineer and here uh, this time what I have, how I've combined these two technologies is that I have written the software by myself to operate this camera over its pod. So what happens is this pod here has servo motors in it which allow the pod to, um, to pan and tilt. So that is what it can do. It can move, it can move upward and down, upward and down and it can do pan and tilt. The only thing which I do not, I cannot do at this time is zoom in and out. And the reason for not being able to do zoom in and out is that my camera does not support LAN-C protocol. So when you buy a camera which you want it to be fully automated and be covered or zoom in and zoom out is also a function you need, then you would need a camera which can uh, accept a LAN-C protocol. So now, how this works is, right now this camera can work for tilt and pan, but not for zoom in and out. Camera's output from here is taken and number one, the camera is doing recording here. So recording is happening, but the output is taken and I'm taking the output through the video out because that is the only output I have. The camera's range is about six, seven hundred dollars. So not a very expensive camera. Uh, so video out. This video out is sent into a device which converts the video, which converts AV um, output to USB camera output. And that is then connected into a computer. 
So, this USB is connected in computer right and here is the monitor, here is the keyboard and mouse. So, this is the basic setup. The cameras, uh, camera also, so may, uh, if you are buying a camera, be careful. Some cameras do not come with, most of the, most of the mid-range cameras do not come with a uh, audio input. So, they do not come with a mic input. And if you see here, in my case, I have the mic attached. You can see the mic here. I have the mic attached and that mic is actually attached with a wireless system and that wireless system has a, um, a pin uh, w going into the mic input for the camera. So the, the system which I have is sure wireless audio, but I do uh, think that there is a, I forgot the name of another one which is actually a better choice. Anyways, the, sh the camera has a mic input and that mic input is actually connected from here to a wireless receiver, show receiver which is then receiving uh, signals from here. So the audio is going from here, the video is going into the computer. Now inside the computer, the software which I have written, so I have written the software myself. If you are interested in knowing how the software is written or if you are interested in using that software, reach out to me, send me an email or uh, contact me via the comments here. Uh, so, the software which I have written is the one which sends signals. So, via the computer then we send signals back to this pod. So, these signals, these signals are what are driving this camera right now. So, if you see right now the camera is honing into my hand. So, if I, if I keep going, you would see that the camera is moving wherever my skin color is. So, what I do is in the software here, I tell which color to, to follow. So, right now the camera is trying to and I need to work on it a little bit more. The camera is trying to hone into my skin color and the skin color, there are three objects which are showing right now, my face and my hands. So, now it is trying to actually I can see on the computer right now that the camera is able to track all these three objects. And then I have a little algorithm which says that if one object is farther on the on this side and the other object is higher and above, then track the hand because this object is hand. And if this object disappears, then track the face. So if you see the camera just came to my face, but if I put my hand out here, it is going to start working with the with the hand. If I remove the hand, the camera is going to first try to go to the hand and then follow my head my face. Now, if the hand is there, then it can be tracking upwards or it can be tracking downwards as I type or as I write on the board. And if I stop that, again the camera would come back. And if I disappear from this frame altogether, the camera is not going to be able to find anything and then it would reset itself to a home position. So, it has just reset itself here. So, that is the basic camera setup. So again, I'm back in the uh, in the thing here. The next step for me is that I am actually going to buy a camera with the Lancy protocol, and then attach that to this, and then create the software to do some zoom in and out as well. The other option which I was thinking was that instead of doing the same camera with the <coughs> with the zoom in and out, maybe I should buy another camera which sits somewhere over here and is always honed in, always focused in or zoomed into my hand and the area of that hand. So, then I can do a cut from one uh, type of, of one, one zoom level to another zoom level. So, I do not have to do zoom in and zoom out. Anyway, so that is the basic camera setup. The lighting setup and if you see here, my lighting setup is actually not awesome. The reason for that is that I, the basic problem to solve in this particular case is where is the shadow going. The thing which I did not want and actually this is my um, co-founders um, advice and it is correct. The thing which I we did not want was that the shadow falling on this side but because that is very distracting for the student students. So, the shadow has to fall on the other side or has not to fall at all. So, due to this 
I actually am missing a key light. So if you know the three point lighting, you know that there is a light on this side and there is a light on the above and there is a light here and that is called the key light. Uh, in our case, I do have, if you see, I have a light here. So there is a light present here, which is shining from behind. So that causes the person to be separated from the background a little bit. So this is something which I learned from Joe, who used to be working with me for the cameramanship and she, he did a lot of uh, help uh, figuring out how the lighting should be. Although, uh, again, if I bring him back and ask him the question again, are you comfortable with the lighting, he's probably going to say no because I'm missing a key light. And I'm missing the key light because I do not want a harsh shadow to appear here when I'm teaching. So now then, there is another light on this side. There is a light here but it is in deliberately made to point away instead of point towards me. The reason again that if it points towards me, then the shadow is going to appear here, which is not desirable. The shadow is going to appear here, which is not desirable. So, but there is another light, so at least it provides some sort of ambience and uh, brightness. Then there is a light here, here, which again is not the key light, it is not a bright sharp light, uh, it is a somewhat uh, similar light like this. And then I have a daylight here, which is primarily, it is present here, so it is primarily looking to me in this area. So the, do you see the camera sometimes going up and down, so that is a defect in the software, where when the hands and the face are in the same plane, vertical plane, then the camera cannot figure out where to, where to, what part to show. So it does this what you're seeing. So that is a defect which I have to clear, which I have to fix. Anyways, there's a light here, there is a light there, there's a light there, and there's a light here. So that is the lighting on the camera. This particular light is daylight corrected. So it is a cool balanced light, and that is what we have for the lighting. So again, uh, sure wireless from the camera, I'm taking AV out and I'm going through the USB converter. So in my case, the converter is Pinnacle device, Pinnacle device, which then converts it for the software. Software is written totally by me. The software is written right now at in C sharp, um, .NET technology. I do work with Java, Python, and uh, PHP as well, but primarily C sharp and Java are something which I really like to work with. So wrote it quickly, C sharp using sharp develop. Sharp develop, and then um, this is this is something which I purchased. But ideally, you could put up something very quickly by setting them up on two servo motors, and there are many. Um, solutions present on the um, on the YouTube as well. If you have a question around how to do this, I might be able to help you as well. But anyways, the basic concept is that there is a pod with two servo motors which allow it to be moving um, pan, for pan and tilt. So this is the basic setup. It's a very cute camera. I actually become, uh, I start cracking up when I do this and it, it becomes confused and start seeing, you know, where to see. I'm going to fix that, but for the time being, you can say this is a baby camera. This is probably the third um, video this camera is recording with me. Uh, the the videos so far which it, it has recorded are the um, immunology question number 10 and 11, and this question which is about this uh, camera itself. So the question now is what to name this camera setup? Is it a Robocam? Is it a Medcam? Is it an Autocam? Is it a Tibia cam? <laughs> is it a, is, what is this? So I am reaching out to you. So send me an email or write a comment down here or just decide that, hey, you have nothing to do with this all. But anyways, uh, it, it would be fun to receive some naming advice from medical professionals about a technology. So that will be awesome. The one, one more thing which I uh, forgot to mention, I have a TV here which is attached to my um, presentation device, not a computer, I have an iPad attached here and so the TV shows 
my questions or it shows my presentation or any other internet working I do. My, I have a little uh, desk in front of me, that desk here, so if the camera can, that desk here has a keyboard on it. So this is my keyboard and it has a mouse on it. So I can actually um, drive my computer right over there. These are wireless guys. So I can drive those things from here. So for example, if I want to stop tracking, I'm going to press a button and the camera has stopped tracking me. Now I can get out of it, the frame without camera trying to find where I am. Then I can, uh, I can move the camera to the TV and show the question or any presentation or any other thing which I have prepared for you guys. And then I can bring it back to me. So that all is without tracking. There is some other setups as well. And again, that is a software which I have written. So I can uh, write whichever way I want it to work. The one thing which I'm still going to be solving for is that if I, do, if I go to the TV, it goes very fast. If I come back, it comes back very fast. So it looks mechanical. So I will be working on that to make it a little bit more smooth and splined. So um, that is in, in the game programming, actually, you see that there are Bezier curves. And Bezier curves are uh, more smooth uh, sinusoidal type curves, which are used for various movements. And uh, I'm hoping that I would be using some Bezier curve algorithm for the movement and of the camera and making it smoothing it out. So this means that as we keep delivering our lectures, this camera is also the software and the behavior of the camera is also going to keep improving. My ultimate goal is to put the neural networks on the computer and allow the camera to learn as a, as from its own mistakes and then adjust with artificial intelligence. So I actually love AI work and I have done a lot of um, studies and reading and written a lot of software for the AI. Uh, I have been doing some game programming at some point. Again, do not forget I'm a doctor, but yes, yeah, software engineering is something which I have been loving. So I've, I've been doing that as well. So I think at some point I'm going to pick up some sort of a AI library, attach that into my software and start using that to teach the camera to be a more smooth operator. Um, so this is what it is. Again, the request from the med uh, professionals out there, request from anyone who you are, you, who, who's uh, watching these videos. Uh, number one, uh, please leave a comment. I hope that I am making some positive contribution. There is a lot of time which goes into preparing and then delivering. Um, and the second thing is help me name this camera project uh, I do not, so I'll just come up with something like Robocam or Medcam and be done. So I'm sure that you can come up with a better name than I can. So thank you very much. Now what I'll do is I'll walk over to the camera and turn the recording off and I would, I would take that part of the clip out for the final video. All right. Thank you very much and have a nice day. We would resume our Med lecture soon. This is a request to you to give me some input. Thanks. Bye.